Good morning. This is the modern C, C++ for DevOps workflow. We're going to be talking a lot about the Conan Package Manager, which is one of JFrog's newer products, a great open source tool for everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Galpin. I'm a solution architect at JFrog. It's a real pleasure to, to work with you guys. That's part of what I do as solution architect, and also I spend a lot of time talking to our customers about the sorts of things that um, we're going to talk about today. So today's agenda, I want to do a quick talk about the problem statement, what we're going to solve, talk a little bit about why you use package management with Conan, and then CI, CD with Conan, and then at the end, we should have a little bit of time for questions. So please think about those questions and uh, put them in the Q&A tab as they come up, and we should have some great answers at the end. So I want to start with a basic problem statement. You know, I'm a C, C++ developer, as was my father before me. And, you know, the thing about being a C, C++ developer in the modern world is that you work on the coolest stuff out there, from self-driving cars to drones to automating factories to... You know, you name it, if there's a cool new gadget or thing, an awful lot of it is being done in C, C++ today. And so that's really cool. But, you know, when I'm going and doing my builds, I feel like, I feel like this. You know, Frogger is a great game. I, I still play it today when I want that retro feel to my game. Um, but it's uh, a bit dated. You know, retro feel is not, is not the sense I want of my build tools. And I really do feel very often when I'm working on C, C++ builds, I feel like things haven't really progressed since the 90s. And everybody else has gotten to go ahead and do really cool things and not so much with C, C++. And what I really need to know is how can I go faster? And the answer is that I have to be able to, you know, leverage the modern tools. And, and so this is the motivating concept behind Conan. And for that matter, behind JFrog is the motivating concept is how do we release builds faster? So first, for some of you who may not have used package management in the past, why do I care so much about package management? Why am I so excited about bringing package management to C, C++? And we like package management for a couple of simple reasons. First of all, build once, use many times. Code reuse is a basic principle in C++ development, but so many times, even if you're reusing the code, you have to rebuild it again and again and again. And this can take a lot of time. Um, additionally, every time I rebuild a binary, I run the risk of rebuilding it wrong. Uh, for example, one time many, many years ago, I ended up um, sending to a production test floor, a debug binary, uh, which did bad things for the performance of that particular application. It was a random library in, in the back, and we had managed to check a debug binary into source control, and uh, that was what shipped. Which kind of brings to, this, to the last point. We've been saying for years that it's a bad practice to store binaries in source control. Um, I was told that when I first started using source control professionally in the 90s, and I'm sure many of you were as well, but you probably do it anyways. Now, with something like Git, you know, before it was bad enough, it made your checkout times long, you know, you ran the risk of checking in the wrong binary or screwing things up. And again, did I mention checkout times being long? But with Git, it gets even worse. Um, you know, it makes the resource management of a Git repository insane if you start putting binaries in a Git repository. 
And so one of the big things package management brings me is I can have a reproducible build, but without having to store binaries in source control. So package management is really easy, comparatively speaking, for Java, because in Java and most other tools that have package managers, um, you're building with a cross-platform tool. In C, C++, the whole point is that we're building native binaries. And that makes it, honestly, a, a bit harder. The projects can be bigger, the builds tend to be slower because of it, and we're talking about dependency, dependency management, different builds may have different requirements. So a classic example is OpenSSL. If you are building OpenSSL in Windows, or if you want to use OpenSSL in Windows, there's extra dependencies that you don't need when you're building on other platforms. And so whatever solution we build for package management for C, C++ has to take into account binary compatibility, possible differences in requirements, um, still has to do transitive dependencies, which may change based on the platform. It's a pretty complex task. But Conan has solved these problems. So Conan is a completely fast tool uh, with the MIT license. Uh, it builds on Windows, Linux, Mac, Android, many other platforms. It's in use today. It handles binaries. It gives you the ability to build from source. So if you need a binary built against an architecture that you don't already have built, it gives a very simple way to rebuild that dependency from source. It models the binary compatibility concerns. It's built in Python, so it works pretty much anywhere. And it's pretty easy to configure and customize as you need it to. Basically, it gives you everything you need in Maven, but for C, C++, and therefore handling all of the special cases of C, C++, it's a lot more. We also have a brand new concept called Conan Center. So once we introduce a package manager, the next thing you want is something like JCenter or Maven Central or RubyGems.org, NPMJS. You want a central repository so that you have easy access through the package manager to standard packages that people want to use. And we've created Conan Center, um, leveraging the capabilities that we developed in creating um, JCenter and leveraging the JFrog bin tray application for software distribution. It is completely free for any open source C, C++ product to join the system. Um, it is, you'll notice here in the picture, I've got a very small frog on top of the big frog. You know, the big frog is JFrog bin tray. It's got really scalable technology. But Conan Center, as I mentioned, is brand new. Um, I think when I checked it, it has about 10 packages in it right now. We are working on ramping it up. We encourage you, if you know a C, C++ project out there that's interest, interested in going with Conan and interested in publishing their results on Conan Center, please reach out to us. We're absolutely interested in having them join Conan Center. Um, and again, it is completely free for those open source projects and should make discovery really easy. So, without further ado, let's do a demo. So, I have cloned this Git repository with this example. Um, and you can see here that I have a simple CMake lists which gives me a little bit of information about my CMake setup and what my executable is built off of, a single CPP file. Um, and I have a conan file dot text, which is just gonna say that this depends on a specific version of POCO and a specific version of Boost, and it's gonna be created with CMake. Um, and then there's also a commands dot list file, which I am just preserving so that I remember um, all of the things that I have to type into the console to make the demo work. And you can access this repository yourself if you wish. So first of all, let's try to do a CMake. 
And that's not going to get very far because it doesn't have the dependencies. Well, that's cool. Let's do simple command, conan install dot. Oops. Sorry. Let's first clear the cache and try that again. That's the end result, but let's do this one more time. OK, so you can see that it's going out to Conan Center. It's also occasionally hitting a, a library called Conan Transit, which represents um, legacy projects that haven't joined Conan Center, um, some stuff that the creators of Conan built uh, when they were first demonstrating Conan, whereas Conan Center, the projects themselves join in. And I go through this, and I discover that to do bzip2, um, we don't have a package in either Conan Center or Conan Transit that has bzip2 compiled for a Mac. So it gives me instructions. Add dash dash build bzip2. Sounds easy. Let's do it. So now it's going to go and download the source package for bzip2 and compile it. Now, then it says that it's missing boost as well. Now, if you've built boost before, you know that uh, building boost is a little bit longer probably than we want to do in this webinar. So instead, I'm going to go to another repository that I have. Uh, and pull out Boost from there. And so that other repository is going to be out on an Artifactory server. So Conan does have a completely open source uh, repository of its own. But a great option is to use JFrog Artifactory. JFrog Artifactory is a universal repository manager. It covers um, all these different package types. And as you can see, one of the package types is Conan. Uh, and then it also has generic, which is often used for non-packaged end-term binaries from C builds. So I'm going to go out to my Artifactory server. I'm going to hit Set Me Up. I'm going to go Conan. I'm going to select Conan Local. And I'm going to hit the Copy button here. I'm going to go back to my command line. Paste it in. And then I'm going to make two changes to what Set Me Up told me. The first thing is it asked me to insert a name for my remote. I'm going to call it JFrog Training since that's the name of the server. And then I'm going to add dash dash insert. And by doing dash dash insert, what I'm doing is I'm saying that I want this repository to have primary um, resolution control. So I want to go here first before I go out to the public locations. And now I can do Conan remote list. And you see that I've got my JFrog training, Conan local repository. I have Conan center. And then if I can't find it anywhere else, I'll go to Conan transit. Since I've already built bzip, I'm going to upload bzip. To JFrog training. It's going to ask me. So by doing bzip2 star, I said I want all versions of bzip2 to be uploaded. It has a specific version, the 106, with the Lesotho recipe stable version. And I've uploaded it successfully. Now I'm going to clear my cache out. And I'm clearing the cache because um, it does have some uh, bad packages in that it downloaded from Conan Transit that don't have the right versions. By clearing the cache, it'll get the correct version of all the packages now. And I do Conan install dot. Actually, no, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to do time Conan install dot. So we can see how long this takes. And so JFrog Training is a uh, SaaS instance of JFrog Artifactory. So it's out in Amazon, and I'm here at my desk. So this takes 
a little bit of time. It could go a lot faster if I had a local repository either on this laptop or here on the local network in the office. And you can see that I'm retrieving the Boost package from JFrog Training. And I'm getting OpenSSL and POCO still from Conan Center. And this time it took 40 seconds. If I had built all of this from source, it would take a little bit over 10 minutes to do this exact same build. So I've gained a 20 times speed improvement by using Conan to run this build. And that's huge. If I want to go and do an automation or a build on commit, there's a big difference between a build that you run the build and then you go get coffee, and you run a build and you answer two Slack messages. So I'm really excited by this. And now if I do cmake dot, and now I do cmake dot dash dash build, make dash dash build dot, and it's going to build my target demo. And indeed, I have a working executable that calculates an MD5. Um, pretty nice. So that's the advantages of plain package management at your desk. It's great. Works on my machine. You've seen it happen. But that's not a DevOps workflow. To get to a DevOps workflow, we have to do a lot more. So let's first take a quick look at what is the DevOps workflow for my typical customer of JFrog. So they're going to start by doing basically what we just did. Awesome developer writes some awesome code, builds it at their desk using the tool of their choice in this case, Conan and CMake, um, resolves the dependencies from Artifactory or the web as needed. And once they've got code they're satisfied with, they're going to commit it to source control. And once it's been committed to source control, a CI system picks up that commit and does a build. And it does the exact same thing. It builds with the tool of its choice. Again, it does a Conan build. And again, it's going to resolve from Artifactory. But now it's going to deploy the results of its build out to Artifactory so that Artifactory can um, have it present so that other people can use it, whether it's another library that other people want to use through Conan, or whether it's an end executable that somebody wants to test or use in another environment. And compiling successfully your code is the sort of the beginning of the artifact lifecycle. Then it's going to go through a test and promotion process. QA, other promotion, metadata, as we say, will be collected on the artifact. This is one of the great advantages that Artifactory brings to the, to the table. And then after that, once it's ready, it's going to be deployed out to a production server. Or maybe you're going to close the grand circle, deploy it back to Bintrace so it can be shared with the community or shared with customers, and potentially go out to lots of devices globally to send an update out. So this is standard CI for C, C++. And you, know, you can do it with Jenkins. And you can do it with Jenkins and Conan with pretty much any build tool you want in C. CMake, Visual Studio, GNU, LLVM, whatever you want to use. So what does it actually look like for a simple Conan process? Well, first up, you're going to build the library by retrieving dependencies using Conan from Artifactory. And that will build up the library that you want to build through the build system and the source code. CMake, whatever, creates the binary package for your library. And then you put it back in Artifactory to feed the next build. This is the CI process. So let's take a look.
Let's go out to our Jenkins server. Let's try to get the password right. And let's do a build. And so this build has a uh, init resolve build and a test and promote phase. So what does that mean? Let's look at the Jenkins file real quick. So when I'm initing it, I'm just getting the code um, from GitHub. Then in the resolution stage, I'm actually removing the default Conan Center and Conan Transit and replacing them with repositories for Artifactory, Conan Local, and Conan X Local. So this is DSL that's introduced by the JFrog Artifactory plugin, which controls both Artifactory and Conan. Um, and then, um, so in this case, I pulled all of the binaries I need uh, pre-built into my local scenario. So I, I, my company is concerned about security. I don't want to do a build from the web. So here I've got binaries that I know are good based on source that I know, based on a build and a build environment that I know stored on my Artifactory server. And then it does an install and um, then it does a make. And then it's going to upload the results of the make to the server. And then it's going to test it by running the binary. And if the test succeeds, it's going to promote the artifact. So let's see, we have all green here. And then I also have this nice little logo of the Artifactory logo to go look at my build information. So build information is the other side of a bill of materials of the build. And so I get to see published modules here. And I can see here's all of the Conan packages that got downloaded. So I got Boost and BZIP2 and Zlib and POCO and OpenSSL all downloaded. And I can see exactly where they came from. And learn various things about where these objects came from. How many builds used each of these objects. So what pipeline created this object and all the builds that use this object are presented here in Artifactory. And I can jump back here. I can also see what did I build. So I built an executable version 24. Same as my build number. I've got the environment variables of the Jenkins slave that I built on for this particular binary. Um, and I can diff two builds against each other. So I can go back to an older build, say, and I can actually see that some of the dependencies are new. This older build didn't have the same set of dependencies, but the environment variables were pretty much the same. So something changed in my packaging on this build. Whereas if I compare it against the latest build, the only thing that's really changed is the output file, changed version numbers and, and updated itself. All the dependencies are the same. And the only environment variable differences are you know, minor stuff that relates to the individual build that it ran on. And based on that, I would conclude that if anything were different between build 24 and build 23, it had to be something in the software itself, not something that was caused by an environmental issue. And build information is a JSON object. Um, so if you want to see it or parse it or manage it, you can do that by yourself. And you know, if you just want to kind of get a sense of it, these are the things that it's collecting. 
And then on my published modules, this app 24 knows exactly what build name and build number that it's associated with. And again, I have that traceability to the build. So pretty cool, I've got CI now. Um, I also did a promotion. So I can see the release history here. I passed my basic execution test. It's not much, but if I wanted to do a more complex procedure later, I could continue doing the promotion process. Um, promotions, basically all you have to do is specify I want to promote a specific build name and build number, and then it's going to move all of the objects associated with that build. In this case, it's just the one executable. But if I'd had many objects created by this build, it would move all of them atomically to a different location or set properties on them or any changes I wanted to make, either via the REST API or in this case via DSL in my Jenkins pipeline. And that pretty much sums up the basis of a DevOps workflow. From there, now that it's in Artifactory, Chef can go out and resolve it from Artifactory with curl, or you can deploy it out to bin tray for your devices. No matter where you want to take it, it's ready to go. So with that, um, you've got a basic overview of what Conan does, why we want to use Conan, how to use Conan with Jenkins, and how to use Conan with Artifactory. Now again, you don't need Artifactory to use Conan. You can use Conan yourself, it's completely open source, just grab Conan. But we do think that there's some advantages to using it with Artifactory. That's the great synergy um, between Conan and Artifactory. So with that, I'm going to open the floor for questions. Build info shows all the dependencies. Does the Jenkins build upload all the dependencies back to Artifactory? So in this case, the answer to that question was no. Um, I actually got all of the dependencies from Artifactory because I took out the Conan Center and um, the Conan Center and Conan Transit dependencies. But in fact, if I had wanted to, I could have uploaded all of the dependencies to Artifactory as part of the build. And then another question I've got is, how do I work with builds that have on some packages that are not currently packaged with Conan? So, if you have a mix of packages that are dependent on Conan and ones that are not, the ones that are not are just going to be part of your standard make process. And so you'll build them from source or you'll have the binaries checked in, however you were doing it before. And then as you slowly migrate more and more packages into Conan, you can remove the source from that tree and you know, just create the Conan file that I showed you if all you want to do is dependencies. Or, is, or you can do um, a more complex build. If you want to create your own Conan packages, it's a little bit more complex with a Python file that looks a little bit like this. So um, this just includes just a little bit of additional information on what the settings are and, and how the build works for creating a package as opposed to just creating a, a version like we had on my example. Where the Conan file is just a text file. So I just have to declare the dependencies. Uh, so another question, is that a standard Jenkins pipeline job or is that some custom Conan thing? So the answer to that question is that this is a standard Jenkins pipeline job, but we did add the Jenkins Artifactory plugin. And the Jenkins Artifactory plugin gave me the ESL for the Conan client run options here and the clone, 
Conan client remote add. Of course, I could have done it all without the Jenkins Artifactory plugin and just done sh commands to run Conan on my slave. Uh, but it does give me a couple of DSL options. And if you want to collect build info, you do need the uh, JFrog Artifactory plugin. But that's a standard plugin that's available on the Jenkins Marketplace. So if you go out and um, manage Jenkins here and manage plugins, you know, Artifactory is a standard plugin that is available on the Jenkins Marketplace and tracked that way. So how difficult is it to build older versions of the product with older dependencies? So if you want to go back in time, one of the cool things actually about Conan is that you just have the Conan file dot text here, right? So if I went back in time to an older version of the product that had an older version of the library, maybe it wanted to use POCO 1.6 instead of 1.7.8, then the Conan file would list POCO 1.6 and it would go out and build POCO 1.6 and get POCO 1.6 from Conan Center if it's available, and if not, you'd be able to build it. So it's actually very easy to get older dependencies uh, through Conan, provided that that older dependency had a Conan recipe. And if it didn't, then, you know, you would have to build the Conan recipe around it. But a Conan recipe is pretty much version independent. So it's pretty easy to have those older dependencies available. Hopefully that answers your question. If not, feel free to ask a follow-up. I just want to say, if you come up with more questions or if you want to get started with Conan, feel free to reach out to JFrog. We really want feedback on Conan. We really want people to get started and enable people to get started with Conan. As I said, it's free to get started with Conan, especially for open source projects or even for non-open source projects just to get started with Conan. There's no cost involved. Um, and we would be more than happy to uh, talk to you about it. We're seeking feedback. And um, thank you very much for your time and attention. And I hope you have a great day.